As JSO continues to investigate the shooting death of a 13 year old, they're undoubtedly looking into the bullet fragments and shell casings found at the scene. Those pieces of evidence may help them determine if the same gun was used in other shootings. Earlier today, ATF agents, state law enforcement officers and sheriffs from four different counties gathered in Flagler County. They discussed Operation Young Guns and the technology used to trace stolen weapons that get into the hands of kids. News for Jack's reporter Eric Abinay is joining us live to explain the problem and the solution when it comes to linking certain guns with certain crimes. Well, Kent, law enforcement says too many guns are easily stolen and then sold on the black market to kids and young people who use those guns to commit violent crimes in the streets. But now uh, law enforcement in four local counties is taking part in a program that allows them to possibly link those stolen guns to multiple shootings and possibly multiple suspects. We want to attack. To say Trump. State Attorney RJ Larizza and the top cops over the four counties that make up the seventh judicial circuit are fed up with kids and young people committing gun violence with stolen guns is an understatement. There has been quite an increase, a troubling and dramatic increase in gun violence, especially with young kids. Someone under the age can't legally buy a gun. So they're getting these guns in the black market, burglarizing cars and stealing them. If you're a little desperado and you think it's cool to get out of a car at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and strafe a house with over 50 rounds with an AK-47, we're coming to get your St. John's County Sheriff Robert Hartwick and Putnam County Sheriff Gator DeLoach says so many of these scenes of gun violence involving kids and young people could be avoided if gun owners didn't make it easy for their guns to be stolen. All we simply do now is leave the firearm in the car with the doors unlocked and go to bed. You're setting yourself up to become the victim of a crime and setting up potentially someone else who may become the unfortunate recipient of one of those rounds that's fired from your firearm. Fire the hole! To find out how many times a stolen gun has been used to commit violent crimes, Flagler, Putnam, St. John's, and Volusia County Sheriff Offices are now taking part in the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network Program, or NIBIN for short. Here's how it works. When a gun is recovered at a crime scene, that weapon has certain microscopic markings similar to fingerprints that are transferred to a spent bullet and shell casing that are collected at the crime scene. Investigators can take that same gun and fire it into a machine to see if it transfers the same markings. I was allowed to participate in a ballistics test demonstration. Right, there you go. Insert the magazine. Cycle it. Okay, put it inside of there. Okay. Fire the hole! That round I shot could be used to see if this gun and so many others that have been collected at crime scenes were used in different homicides in different counties. So you can take a test fire that we don't believe is involved in a shooting and it hits off another shooting, builds an investigative link that we can further pursue. So this technology not only links a gun to a specific crime, but also... You hold somebody accountable for the crimes that maybe uh, this gun was used in. Putnam County deputies confiscated 300 guns that were all recently tested. Now it's just a matter of determining how many times those guns were used in crimes and if those guns migrated from other counties or states. Now, it's worth pointing out that JSO is already using NIBIN, and according to law enforcement officials I spoke with at that uh, news conference, it would not be surprising if uh, JSO learns the gun used to kill that 13-year-old over the weekend was also used in another crime, possibly outside of Duval County. Reporting live, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station.